Good afternoon. I don't know, it's about 4, 4.30, something like that. Sorry, um, the van's facing the light. and so kind of, I have the, you know, you're supposed to read my mind. The sun visor down, that's what it's called. Uh, so, wow, what a response from that last video. And it was so interesting because <clears throat> I got um, responses from other countries too and how they work there. And so it's interesting. Some pretty much are about the same and some are way different and uh, pretty much cover everything. But a couple things that kept popping up. First thing I made little notes here so that I don't forget. Uh, with my sister Pam, people are like, well, how's Pam getting, you know, to stay there? Pam's a whole different story. Listen, uh, Pam had many surgeries since she was a baby. And uh, she was pretty much in and out of the hospital till she was five. And uh, so then in her later years, you know, she worked at Marvel Comics. She worked for Stan Lee. I worked for Stan Lee. I worked there with her when I lived in California. Um, but uh, she was on disability even before she had her strokes. She had health problems. Um, and so when she had her strokes, her friend Ray was actually in California. Pam used to live with the guy, Mark. They're just really good friends roommates and Mark's girlfriend was Ray so Pam knew Ray and Ray happened to be they had moved to Chicago um and Ray happened to be there in town when Pam had her strokes she had it like she had them she had multiple in a parking lot and thank goodness because had she had them at home she lived by herself um they didn't think she would have made it but uh, and Mark was the contact person and Ray just happened to be in California. So Ray went to be with her. And then they actually, because Pam couldn't stay by herself, made it where Pam went to stay with them in Chicago. And they got her, and this is a whole story, so I'm just summarizing. They got her into a place there, like an assisted living. And I tell you what, when we found out so Pam actually had to have a feeding tube. And when we found out that weekend, I drove my mom um, to Chicago to see Pam. And when we got there, like this was the most awful place ever that I've been to. And um, they literally, like they quit giving her physical therapy and she had a feeding tube and they weren't cleaning it. And so it was infected and stuck to her. And they weren't showering her and her hair would be matted to her head. And then, um, so we would clean her up and everything. And then, you know, we would have to leave because we could only go for like the weekend. And then we'd come back and we'd take turns. Like then my brother would take my mom and, you know, my sister. And so we did that for months, uh, maybe uh, like eight months, something like that. And my sister, Sandy, my oldest sister, worked for the county or the state. And then she knew people. And so she kind of got the ends on how to get Pam to Minnesota. And another thing, too, at this place, this place... Oh, it was the most depressing place ever. They, in front of the cafeteria, they would wheel all the people and they would all be in their wheelchairs, like in a circle. And they were all like drugged up. They were seriously all like this, just like sitting there. I don't even know how they ate. Um, it was probably the most disturbing things I've seen. One of the most disturbing things. And then my mom, cause you know, Joy's all like put together. And so when we went down there, she had bought like, um, you know, 10 pair of matching, uh, like, um, like sweatpants and sweatshirt, you know, to bring for Pam to wear. Cause that was just the easiest with the feeding tube. They finally took it out, uh, after a while, but my mom brought all that and, you know, we cleaned her up and everything. So she brought all that new stuff for Pam. And the next time we went, somebody had stole all of them. Um, so then Sandy 
work to get her transferred to Minnesota and she was at a, a, a nursing home in Stillwater. And again, the nicest people ever, but um, you know, it smelled like a nursing home, it looked like a nursing home. And she had to share a room with somebody. And this lady was not nice and there was no like, I mean, the room was about as big as the van. And they both had TVs and one was watching one thing and one was watching the other. So it was like dueling TVs. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then somehow got her into where she is now. Um, and that was like 10 years ago. So I didn't have anything to do with all that. So listen, I am learning my way through all this. Okay. And so then other people ask like about, you know, ask for a social worker, ask for help. I've done all that. I did that last year. Last year when I was here, I called the county to talk about um, getting help for mom. And they said, unless she uh, only had $21,000 in assets, because I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but here in Minnesota, that's considered poverty level. If that's all she could have in assets, and if she had any more than that, they wouldn't give her help. The only thing she could get help with was, you know, she had macular degeneration and someone came out and um, like helped her to see if anything could help her more, you know, with n not seeing. But we already had covered that. You know, we bought those little bumps and everything, you know, so she could like, when she does the microwave or the washing machine. You know, we bought those bumps that you can feel to do that. And so that, I mean, we had already done whatever that lady had ideas for regarding that. And then just like a month ago, I had called about getting a social worker um, because I figured when I'm gone, you know, she may need somebody to advocate. And this is when I thought she was going into the assisted living home. But, you know, at 94, you should be able to and um, they said, nope. So I have tried all those avenues. I've been trying for the last year to get help. Um, so, and now truly it's all on me. Like my sister is out of the picture now. And, but uh, we went through care.com and we had, a, um, I interviewed by phone a girl yesterday and, um, like a lot of people had applied, but there was just something about her. She only lives two miles from my mom and she has a CNA certified nursing assistant certificate. And she has a physical therapy degree, I think. And uh, she's been doing this for I don't know, like 10 years or something. And so, um, so yeah, my sister's gonna show her we met with Joy today because I wanted them to meet and she's the sweetest thing and really great. And so um, we're going to give it a whirl. So it'll be like four hours a week. And then, you know, Joy can go grocery shopping. If she needs prescriptions, they'll go do that, you know, because she needs like a certain number of hours a week to make it worth her while. Like she's not going to come just for one hour and then go. So that's what we're going to start with and, you know, see if that works. And she said, you know, we'll just see how it goes. Cause you don't know until you know and keep trying. Um, and then this woman, Esther, um, oh, first of all, then, okay, got my stereos fixed yesterday, squirrel. Um, so now my stereos are working and they even upgraded cause, um, and that was a surprise to me. It took, I was there from like 9 a.m. to noon and I'm like ah, do you know when it's going to be done and uh, she's like well they ended up upgrading from the 1000 series to the 3000 series she goes they fit better and you gave us a deal I had sold them a power pack for like half you know than what it was and they really are using it a lot so she's like thanks so they upgraded to the 3000 series for me and so now my speakers work pump it in and um, then oh so then I don't even know why I told you that, but because I'd probably forget if I did. Uh, then, um, what? Oh, I was talking to a lady this morning. Oh, because I've had to deal with my health insurance. And 
I got a notice and then I had called today and listen, it is not easy to get a hold of anybody at the insurance place. Um, and so I think I was on hold for like 45 minutes. And then I finally got a hold of them and I was talking to her and I had to explain like a bunch of stuff, like my work thing now and stuff like that, you know, if you have to update stuff. And um, I said, well, listen, I, you know, take care of my mom too. I go, that's like a job, I'm there every day. And, you know, there's a way that you can get paid as a PCA, like that you're helping. And so she gave me the phone number, but um, I had asked before about that when I called last year. So I don't know, and a girl here, that's what she used to do. So, um, but you know, I'm gonna be leaving now. So when I come back, uh, you know, in April, I'll call and get more information about that. Because um, like I said, I had called last year. They made it sound like I couldn't do that. So, um, but again, since I'm leaving, I won't need to worry about that now, but when I come back, I'll look into that. And now I have a number specifically to get a hold of them. <clears throat> you know, with the government, there's so many, or state or county, you know, who do you talk to? And then they transfer you to people. Um, oh, and then somebody <laughs> why don't you live with her? Why don't you just live with her? And then somebody else replied, exactly. Well, listen. Joy lives in a one bedroom apartment and it's small and she lives with Olivia and um, yeah, I have my own place. This is what I have. And I leave for six months. Um, and I've talked about this before, but if you haven't followed me, uh, you have to be on the lease there. You can't even stay overnight at Joy's place and because it's a 55 plus, so it has to do with security. Like when I um, got keys, you know, we had to put like a $250 deposit and have a background check because they don't just want anybody having keys. Listen, these are vulnerable people. And so, you know, it's just not, and, and I'm grateful for that, that it's like security for them. And the only time I stayed there was when my mom was in the hospital for over a week last year and I had to unpack she had just moved in and I had to unpack all of her boxes. <laughs> um, but yeah, and you know, I don't want to live with my mom. If I had a big house or something, that would be one thing. But, and listen, everybody said to you, why don't you take Joy in the van? Why don't you take her with you? Joy, I know for how good she looks, she looks amazing and she does amazing. But you have to understand she's gonna be 94 and she does have medical problems. She needs to be near doctors. She needs to, you know, she has like arthritis in her knees. She, you know, can't walk very fast. She gets winded sometimes easily. I mean, that's just how, you know, it goes as we age. And so being in the van is not an option bringing her with me and living with her is not an option. And her living with uh, any other of my family that's left isn't an option either. So, um, so yeah, so Joy is good and now she can keep Olivia. We were worried about Olivia. So, you know, here's the thing. It's all a learning lesson. Did all that, now I know what I'm in for. Um, and that's why I said, I'll be home in April. Her lease is up in May. And so when I come back, we'll reassess and see where things are at. And hopefully it will go well. I have a good feeling about this girl um, that's going to be helping my mom. And then I'll be in contact. And then what I'll do is I'll pay her every week. You know, I have power of attorney. And so um, Joy won't have to. She was worried about like having to pay her and write a check. And I'm like, no, that's all done online. Like, I'll do that. And then when her prescriptions are due, um, I'll know and then they know to go pick them up. And so, yeah, we'll all just be working together. Um, but yeah, and I really appreciate all the, you know, thoughts and help and look into this and stuff like that because, you know, there might've been things that I hadn't looked into, but I assure you for now, um, and Joy can't be on Medicaid. Is it Medicaid? She's on Medicare because she's older, but Medicaid, is only 
And that was the thing, when you're in the assisted living home, they suck all your money until you only have $3,000 in assets, and then you can apply for Medicaid. Um, so you can only have $3,000 in assets. And then the state will help you. And then you may have to move to a different place. And, uh, and so she would be sucked dry within the first year. Um, and so I don't want that to happen. So we're just gonna figure it out from here. Oh, and then there's a lady, Esther, who reached out to me. She actually sells like insurance or something that has to do with this. Again, I'm just wrapping my head around this. So I figure I'm going on this journey. I'll take you along with me and maybe you guys can learn something about it. Cause I know a lot of people who follow me are over 50 and maybe are dealing with parents now going through this or thinking about it yourself. So um, I told Esther that I wanna talk to her and then I'd love to do a Zoom with her so she can give the information to you guys too, because I think it's very helpful. And I know, what does any of this have to do with van life? Well, this is life. I live in a van and this is my life. So I just share as I go. Um, so yeah, so I will keep you updated on everything. I just wanted to answer some of those questions. And I had to laugh. I'm probably going to get in trouble again. But people called me racist when I said that old white man. <laughs> charge. Like, if you think that's racist, then you must be white. Because that is not racist. It's the truth. It's not racist. So it's the truth. So uh, watch the news and see who you see on there, okay? And I probably shouldn't have brought that up. But listen, I'm not here to talk politics. I am not here to fight with anybody. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm here to make you feel good, actually. And so, but yeah, that's one thing that I am not, is a racist. And so I just wanted to clarify that. Nope, not that. Uh, and guess what? I was, I won first place, but I think I told you I didn't really read the rules. So this fab over 40, so there's all these different cuts that you got to make. So I came in first for this. I'm in the top 20, the first of the 20. And then I don't know how many are in it, actually. And um, now from the 19th to the 26th, which is my birthday, then uh, they do another cut and then it's the top 15 and then they go to another thing. <laughs> so this goes through December. Um, so I don't know if you're voting. Thank you so much. If you feel like well, keep voting, that would be great. Like I said, I'm so busy. I don't have time to really think much about it. But, you know, again, if I win, amazing. $40,000 would help me and would help Joy out a lot because I would share that with my mom. Because I don't want, that's why I'm trying to think of what I can do to make more money so I can make sure Joy can stay there. So that's what I will be working on. Um, once I leave here, um, work smarter, not harder. Uh, so anyway, and then, um, yeah, and you can vote daily every 24 hours. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description below. Um, yeah, and I could really use a spotcation that comes with it too. <laughs> so, yeah, but I got a lot to do before. What's today? Friday. I work Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at Walgreens. Those will be my last three days. Then Thursday, I leave for my shoot. Come back, I think, Sunday night, later Sunday night. And then I'm leaving that next week. And that's when that girl starts. So I'm going to be here, like, when she starts, because I want them to kind of test it out to see how it goes. So they'll go together and see how it, you know, that, you know. It works, and um, I'm bringing Joy to get her shots on the second, and then I'm going to try and leave on the third. So that's the plan. But she has a teeth cleaning on the sixth that she has to get to. So if that girl can do it, I, I just called to see what time it was because I forgot. I know it's on the sixth. I can't remember what time. So. Um, she said she could bring her if it was in the afternoon. Um, so yeah, so I am just like all over last night. I watched my daughter's dogs. Her and Bailey um, have two dogs and two cats and now three guinea pigs. 
she always told me when she was little, Mom, I'm going to have a farm and you're going to take care of all the animals. <laughs> she goes, and then when I have kids, you're going to take care of them too. I'm like, uh, yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, they're two big dogs. So I brought them to the dog park last night. And for some reason, Basil does not like to ride in the van. I think because it's kind of unsteady. But, you know, you say park and they're in here. And then uh, I actually got up early this morning and uh, brought them to the park this morning too. So they were fun to be with. And then I just took Joy. And uh, yeah, I just dropped her off now. So anywho, I think I might go have a well-deserved drink at the end of the week here. So, uh, you know what to do. Go out and make an adventure, no matter how big or how small. You don't have to sell every move thing and move into a van. Sometimes life is the adventure. You don't need a van. Sometimes it's just life that's the adventure. Go call someone you love, and as Joyce says, tell them that you love them, and don't you dare forget your magic. And thank you guys for all the support. You don't know how much it means to me just to have people like supporting me, saying nice things and, you know, lifting me up. So, okay. I will see you in the next one. Bye.